Hey, good morning to you ladies and gents. This is Big Brace channel. My name is Amir and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a forecast model for a painting manufacturing company. Now I know that I have a sales forecast machine learning tutorial, but this one is going to be more simplified. Moreover, I have received some complaints from some of you guys who cannot find um, the CSV file. Unfortunately, by, you know, by accident, I've lost the file. It was on Kaggle, but I cannot access there anymore. I'm going to try to find a way to uh, retrieve back the file. But for today, I'm going to create a sales forecasting model for um, an imaginary painting manufacturing company without using linear regression. It's going to be simple. And we're going also to visualize data using Matplotlib. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and please don't be like Bob. You know, Bob, that guy who watches videos, enjoys them, but never leaves a comment or even a like. So don't be like Bob. All right, to get started with me, there are a couple ways that I recommend. The first way is to go to Google Collab. So Google Collab. And using, of course, your profile, you can access Google Collab, you can start to code, hit on code here, or you can go to file, new notebook, you can start by typing your, you know, your code simply. And the, the beautiful thing about Google Collab is that you don't have to install anything. So if you will do import pandas, and you will uh, just hit the run button, it's okay. No problem there. If you want to add a new code line, you can do um, import matplot mat plot lib as uh, it's even suggesting you some alias. So fantastic. You will hit enter. You will hit control alt enter. Oh, that doesn't work here. All right. You will just hit the Tron button and boom. You don't have to do pip install globally on your um, file system or anything. It just works like a charm. All right, but today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to open my Visual Studio code and I'm going to run the code there usually by creating a Jupyter Notebook file. And yeah, uh, this is the, the way that I prefer to do it because later I'm going to leave the, the code on a GitHub repo and I'm going to leave the link to that in the description below. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm here inside my Visual Studio Code folder. I have created a file called main.ipymb. And again, that's a Jupyter Notebook uh, extension file. And um, as we said, we're going to create that forecasting model for a painting manufacturing company or any other imaginary company. Um, well, basically, I'm going to use a time series forecasting approach. All right. And one popular library for time series forecasting in Python is Profit. OK, Profit gives me a lot of headache when I created um, other tutorials just for machine learning for, you know, stock market um, prediction model or stuff like that. Um, it's not the easiest to install, to be honest. Um, Interestingly enough, it didn't give me a headache while I was working on IPYMB file uh, or even on Google Collab. It was installed immediately with no problems. Profit um, module is created by Facebook for those who don't know. So um, first thing that you want to do in real life, if you're going to do this or to use this in your work, for example, is to collect and prepare data. So you're going to gather historical sales data. And for this tutorial, for example, I'm going to use the first quarter of 2023. That means from um, January the 1st, 2023 till March 31st, 2023. That's the first quarter, the first three months. The data should include a timestamp column and sales column. And let me just um, create that sales data file. .csv and let me copy the data because it's a lot for three months and there you go so as i said you will have two columns one for timestamp for dates starting from jan 1st 2023 sales uh, you can do either by quantity of or value really doesn't matter um, the concept is going to be the same and here april 1st well that's basically the same thing but just to be clear let's do it till march 31st 
So as we said, the first thing we need to do is to um, load the data. So let me add mark down here. Okay, let's okay, let's delete all that mark down. So here I'm going to say uh, loading data from CSV file. All right, that's the first thing. Let's add another markdown code. Yeah, let's delete that one. All right, so I'm going to use pandas, okay? And pandas is going to load the data in the CSV file and it's going to turn it into data frame in Python. So let's import pandas as pd. Um, next, I want to load the data. Now I'm going to load the data from a uh, CSV file, just to be clear with you guys, data, it's a, um, let's just close that, maybe I cannot, unfortunately, maybe I can do like that, yep, hope this is clear for you guys. So data here is the variable that I'm going to use to uh, refer to timestamps if I want to convert it from the, the timestamp column to the timestamp data or data type. Um, so data here is going to be equal to the pandas module dot and of course read underscore CSV and oh by the way I will need to activate that first so let me just uh, run that first control alt enter and I will need to choose from the Python environments and I will need the conda environment which is the base environment and boom immediately the colors turn to the, the, the normal colors for the code and now we will have auto completion so let's do that again data which is my variable equal to the pandas dot read csv there we go and what i want is the sales data dot csv file perfect next what i want to do is to convert um, the time stamp column to data time type. So data sub timestamp time stamp and that's going to be equal to the pandas module dot a method called to date time. That's going to take um, the, the timestamp which is in our sales underscore data dot CSV file and it's going to convert it to a date time type. All right, so uh, to date time, that's the first suggestion, perfect. And here I'm going to take the data sub timestamp again. All right, perfect, control alt enter. We don't get any errors here. All right, great. Next, what I will need to do is to prepare the data actually. So here I'm going to say prepare the data. All right. And let me just take one coffee sip. So what I want to do now is to rename the columns. Uh, we have two columns here, right? We have the timestamp and the sales. The timestamp, I'm going to call it DS, which stands for date stamp. And the sales, I'm going to use just Y because it's going to be the Y axis or the vertical axis. All right, so let's do that. Let me just add a small comment here, rename uh, the columns to ds and y. So data is going to be equal to data dot rename because we want to rename the columns. So I will need the columns. And that's going to be a dictionary with um, different key value pairs. The first one is going to be the timestamp. And that's going to be uh, the, the value for that is going to be the ds the value for renaming, I mean, and the second one is going to be sales, and that's going to be Y, just Y, All right? Control Alt Enter, no problems. Let's add a new markdown. And here we're going to create and train the model. So creating and training the model. So I'm going basically to do the profit initialization. So I'm going to say initialize a profit, a profit model and fit it into the data, not into, but just to the data, fit it to the data. So if you will have errors in profit, you will need to do pip install profit. 
but let me just go and say from profit i want to import profit with a capitalized p profit so now i'm going to instantiate that profit class by creating a model object so model is equal to profit right and then i want to fit the model to the data so i'm going to take the model dot fit and i'm going to insert here the data all right control alt enter perfect no problems uh, maybe it will help if i will add two small uh, comments so here creating the profit model object and here fitting the data control s all right perfect let's add a new markdown so basically what I want to do is that I want to generate um, the future dates from 2023 till 2028. I just took the first three months to, uh, to help for the prediction, but you can change whatever data or whatever periods you want. Um, you can take the last year to predict the next two or three years. You can take the last quarter to predict the next 10 years if you want um, i've just chose to take the first quarter of 2023 to predict the next five years how the sales situation is going to be so i'm going to see here generate future dates for the next five years right let's uh, do like that and let's add a code line so future dates and that's my variables going to take model dot make future data frame right and inside that i'm going to assign the periods we can really change it to whatever we can do it for the next year to be more realistic all right let's do two years not five or one let's do two years so periods equal to 365 that's one year multiplied by Two. then the frequency is going oh just put it d you can put d or m if you want Control alt enter and we are good to go let's just uh, change that let's modify here let's do two years so let's add a mark down here and now we're going to make the predictions so we are going to use the train model to make the predictions for the future dates so um, here simply I can say make predictions. What I need to do now is to make the predictions for the future dates, right? So I'm going to declare a new variable. I'm going to call it for, uh, how to write forecast, forecast like that. And forecast here, it, we're going to take the model, our model, our profit model. And uh, there is this awesome function called predict open parentheses and we're going to insert the future dates control alt enter perfect so the last step here because we didn't have any visuals or um, results basically let's go ahead and visualize the results so what i'm going to do is to visualize visualize with a z or s i think with a z visualize the results we are going basically to um, plot the forecasted sales so let's do that plot the four forecasted sales and uh, now i want to import uh, matplotlib.pyplot so matplotlib all right dot um, pi plot and let's give it an alias plt plt and then let's go with the figure so figure is going to be line like up and down and then model dot plot i'm going to oops what did i do and then model dot going to plot and i'm going to take the forecast here and I need an X label and a Y label. So I'm going to call the X label. If you will leave it like that, it's going to take the, the same um, the same names that we have named here, the columns, the DS and the Y. We don't want to do that. Let's do, let's give it, uh, let's give the X label a name of date. 
that's the date and let's give the y label name of uh, sales quantity for example as we don't have any monetary value here and let's give it uh, let's give the plot itself a name a title uh, let's call it sales forecast and let's show it so show control alt enter and there we go so you can see here perfectly that um, based on the um, from first that's first of january 2023 until march or the end of march that's our historical right that's our historical data we can even plot that in a separate uh, chart and based on that the forecast continued until march 2025 for our two years right of course the sales data are simplistic but imagine that on real life um, historical data we had here some of course the the sales data you can see here up and down right 200 to 50 to 80 300 290 310 then 380 420 but the general trend overall over time is augmenting or increasing we have visualized everything we have predicted um, this our sales for the next two years based on our historical data which was for the first quarter of 2023 so uh, just for fun we are going to plot that historical data we have in that um, sales underscore data csv file so let's do that real quick so um, let me start by again importing pandas spd let's import uh, matplotlib again matplotlib dot uh, oops dot uh, pyplot as plt and let me again load the data so pd dot treat csv file we are going to take the sales data and i'm going to convert again the timestamp this timestamp column that we we saw i'm going to uh like we have done above actually the same thing but i need it here so that the the plotting will be uh, will be executed with no errors so data sub uh timestamp so timestamp and that's equal to pandas dot to date time that's the one open parentheses and data sub timestamp and let's go ahead and do the plotting so plt dot plot and data timestamp here that should be inside single or double quotes doesn't matter and then again uh, data sub uh, sales right so sales and now i need the x label and the y label so for the x label i'm going to give it date and the y or the um the vertical label i'm going to give it sales um plt dot x label here is date and for that i'm going to say sales just change that from x to y perfect now i want a title also so i'm going to give it a title of oops uh let's say for instance historical sales data maybe and uh, now the x ticks the uh, plot dot x ticks and uh, here the rotation equal to 45 and let's set the grid to true so plot dot grid and set that to true and finally we will show that and i see something that i don't like uh that's mistake here that square bracket should be terminated here and basically we are done let's just minimize a little bit for you guys to see better let's do like that and control alt enter and boom all right so that's the historical sales data starting from January 1st, 2023 till um, March uh, 31st, 2023. 
basically that's the first quarter of the year and the sales as you can see fluctuating up and down and up and down but the overall trend is rising upwards and that's actually assuming for that area here and based on that area here profit module has predicted that the overall sales is going to increase more and more and more over the next two years all right so that was our um, sales prediction model using profit i hope you guys have enjoyed it i will leave the code and the csv file in the description section below in the github repo if you have any suggestions uh, your feedback is very valuable to me any suggestions will be very much appreciated and yeah that's basically it for this tutorial guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one till then stay safe and be well see you later guys